You know, a couple of things that I do want to touch on, I, I mentioned a while ago that to me are very important. Uh, it, it, to me, it's not even, it, it's not so much just as important in my professional career, but I think it's important in my life. And to me, one of the things that I really try to drive home uh, that, that I always try to work very hard at, and it's a simple word, communication. In fact, I think the word communication is probably one of the most important words in the English language. And when I look at the success or the failure of whether it's a personal relationship or professional re relationship, whether it's a group of people or just two people, to me the success, a lot of it has to do with good communication and the failure has to do with bad communication or maybe lack of communication. And I always look at a, a problem between maybe two people. I look at it sometimes, I use a lot of racing analogy because that's what I do, is almost like a vibration in a race car. If my driver ever came on the radio and said, I've got a bad vibration, well, I certainly had the option of saying, don't worry, it'll go away. Well, yeah, it was eventually going to go away, probably when he blew a right front tire and hit the wall and we were the next caution. The only way we could get rid of that vibration was bring that car to pit road and make a, make a change, change the tires or do something. And I look at, at, at a problem between two people, whether it's professionally or, or personally, as like that vibration. The only way you can, you can repair that problem between two people or a group of people is hit pit road and start talking about it and having that good communication. And a couple other things that, uh, and my wife and I were just having this conversation driving down here this morning and she reminded me that I was getting a little bit off base because my cell phone kept dropping calls. And that's focusing on things that you can control. And that's a lot easier said than done. And you know what? I could not control that cell phone dropping calls because we were not in a, an area that had a good signal. I was about ready to throw it out the window. And she says, are you focusing on things that you can truly control? And that was hard as a crew chief because I would worry about the weather. I would worry about having a flat tire under, under green. I would worry about being caught up in a crash. But that, th those were things that I could not control. So that's the things that I've really, throughout my life as a crew chief and now as a, even a broadcaster, that I truly try to, to just focus on the things I can control. I cannot control what our rating of a broadcast. There's, just, there's nothing I can really say or do that's going to control that number. But what I can make sure and focus on are the things that I'm saying in that broadcast and the things that I'm doing in that broadcast. And you know, having a plan, but being flexible, I would probably bet the house that Nick Saban has a pretty good game plan for Arkansas on Saturday. But I would also feel confident saying that he knows that he may have to adjust that game plan. And I think that's true in life. You, you, it's, it, you have to have a plan, you have to have goals, but at the same time you have to be flexible enough to be able to adjust that plan or adjust those goals. Now I talked about what I think is the most important word in the English language is communication and to me one of the worst words in our in our vocabulary and I think it's something we all do and we all get caught up on it and that's simply the word assume or assuming and that to me really gets people it gets businesses in trouble is because you start assuming that people know they know something that they they understand something and it's really a word that can get race teams in trouble. It, it can get a race team in big trouble assuming that someone tightened those boats or assuming that someone put the hood pins in that hood. So to me, assuming is 100% is opposite of what I would call good communication. You know, it, it's, it's hard to try to be the best. It's hard to try to get to the top. It's hard to win a championship, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, the players and, and Nick Saban and his staff would tell you it's been very hard. It was very hard to get that first championship that that group got a few years ago against Texas. But it's been very hard to maintain and repeat. And I'm sure that, that if you are a NASCAR fan and you realize what Jimmy Johnson and what Chad Knauss and that 48 Lowe's team, what they've done is, is the five in a row championships that they won from 2006 to 2010 that it was hard for them to win that first championship, but it's even harder to stay on top because all of a sudden now you become the focal point. You become the group with the bullseye on your back because what happens once you reach success is, is you become comfortable. You, you kind of get relaxed a little bit. And I lived this because in 1992, 
with Davey Allison in the 28 car. Uh, we won five races in 92, including the Daytona 500. We won the All-Star race. Uh, we, we were leading the points headed into the final race of the year. Unfortunately, we got caught up in a wreck, one of those things we could not control, and we lost the championship. But because of the way we had performed, we kind of just stayed idle over 19, during the offseason between 92 and 93. And we got to the 93 season, and we looked like we didn't even know what made a race car roll. The problem was, it, were, it was not that we digressed, it's because we were so competitive and ran so well in 1992 that everyone else caught us. In most cases, they leapfrogged us. And it took us almost a half a season to recover from just being comfortable and being relaxed during that off season between 1992 and 1993.